Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, sorry to catch you on nap time, but um, we're going to try to provide you with uh, some real-time dynamic experience right now. And I hope you're all ready with your computer to go coding. It's going to be very simple. Are you all ready? All right. So I'm Eric, the CEO of uh, Shindera.io, and I came with Audrey. Hello. Who's, who's our evangelist. And today we're going to talk about real-time UX. Um, for those who have noticed, the Blockbuster apps that have been launched recently all were presenting data that was change, changing uh, dynamically. And the reason for this is that this, uh, these applications are more sticky. The dwell time of these applications is better than that of traditional application. What I mean by dwell time is the time that each user spends on the application. And it connects directly to the way our brain works. Our reptilian brain actually requires for the information to be presented to it every half a second for it to consider an, uh, uh, something to be alive. If you interact with something and there is no new information within half a second, it's dead. So you don't want to connect something that's dead. With uh, StreamData.io, what we do is to allow you to code real-time UX in 15 minutes. So that's what we're going to demo without you having to refresh uh, the information. So in finance now, the real-time UX has a different twist, a, an additional twist. If you act on data that is fresh, that is current, when you receive the information and make a decision based upon it, you're going to be able to send an order based on that information that will be confirmed more likely than if you were acting upon all the information. So the, there is an impact of real-time UX not only on the dwell time, but also on the conversion rate for those using our technology. In terms of customers and partners, we started in Europe and uh, we're expanding in the US right now with uh, partners in the API space. Uh, in terms of adoption, we should reach 1 million uh, monthly device uh, this year. Now let's talk about the issue about presenting a real-time UX to a large number of devices. First issue is that the latency on mobile devices is 200 milliseconds. So if you want to stay in the 500 millisecond benchmark, you already hit 200 milliseconds just because it's over mobile. On top of that, the bandwidth is shared amongst everybody in the same uh, mobile cell, so that even though they sell you like 5 meg or 50 meg of bandwidth, actually you end up sharing it with others so that the, the bandwidth available is not as great as it is on desktop. So this is a number of uh, uh, challenges that you need to, to, uh, to meet when architecting a real-time UX application. So what do we recommend? Uh, first of all, you need to do everything to prepare for HTTP2. HTTP2 was released sooner than expected by everybody. Um, and it's extremely powerful because it can allow you to have multiple stream of data going to a device at the same time. So think about leveraging it uh, right now when you architect your um, backend. The second thing we recommend is to use server sent event rather than WebSocket because uh, server sent event does not need to upgrade the protocol from HTTP to WebSocket. And uh, it's HTTP based so that the devices in the middle, like load balancers and firewalls, do not need to be custom, uh, customized to support non HTTP traffic. The last thing we recommend is to use JSON patch, which is a fairly new RFC that provides the ability to present uh, differential information to your UI so that the UI is actually 20 times faster than uh, JSON. So what do we do with this? Uh, we're a proxy as a service. Uh, we're between the API and the devices. Uh, we cache as much data as possible during uh, a second in memory. We calculate differentials so that only the minimal information is sent to the devices and we send it through streaming. So you can keep your REST API the way it is and cater for your larger customers requiring you to stream the, your content to them through streamdata.io. So what does that mean? If you're building a, a real-time data app today, that's the traditional approach. You'd need to build a fairly fat 
system within uh, your data centers with feed handlers and all the things we've been doing for 20 years. And with that, uh, you're going to have to double it so that you end up being um, operating a streaming backbone at the same time as operating a, an app. With streamdata.io, you can focus on the app itself, which is the core thing, and especially for transactional things, and all the, uh, all the content that goes from the third parties down to the devices can go through uh, streamdata.io. Re result is that these, your servers, your front servers, are actually well less uh, loaded, and the network is well less loaded than it would uh, without StreamDataIO. As a conclusion, we're part of uh, FinTech Revolution with, uh, yeah, with uh, Xignite and uh, Stocktweets, uh, STMIs. Uh, that's why we've selected these for the demo that Audrey will make. Um, and a few words we got uh, on Stackshare Top 10 in February. So I was, we were pretty happy about it. And uh, we made it top 50 APIs of ProAvel Web out of 2000 last year. And now, let's code. So, um, so I have developed this revolutionary trading application, which I'm really proud of. You know, it's uh, uh, it's showing uh, information from both Xnite, Estimize, Talk to it, so that the user can decide to buy or not with more information than he usually have. The the only problem is if I want to refresh the information, whether I can make long polls which is obviously not a suitable solution, especially for a mobile application. Or, um, well, I have this lovely refresh button. Well, as you can see, it works, but it's probably not the best user experience we can provide. So let's see how we can improve that with streamdata.io. So uh, on the technical point of view, my application is an Ionic-based application. Ionic is a hybrid mobile application framework based on both AngularJS and Apache Cordova. So if you are familiar with Angular, you should feel comfortable with this code. So I only got a simple HTML page with all the presentation code, a controllers, which um, will be in charge of all the logic of the application. At the moment, it's uh, only calling API service, which is a, a, service, a service which makes uh, makes all HTTP calls to the APIs we have mentioned before. Quite simple. So now, if we want to stream an API using streamdata.io, it's pretty simple. First of all, we have to go on the, on the developer portal, create a new application. Let's call it demo. And then we will gain an access token to uh, start a streaming session with a proxy. So here is my token. And now that I got it, I'm going to zoom a little bit. Uh, I can take the API I want to stream. So for example, let's take stock to its API. I can copy paste it here, which is an HTTPS API. And now I can copy the curl command, which is there, and paste it into a terminal to see what it looks like. OK, so here we have retrieved a first snapshot of data, our initial snapshot, which is basically the 30 last messages uh, from stock tweets. And as you can see, it has start retrieving updates. So here, there is nothing new within the last fifth second. So if nothing new, we don't send data. And there, we have an update. So we are sending just the incremental um, updates. So now that I'm, I have this, I can go back to the uh, My API sections of the portal. And as you can see, my API has been automatically provided. So now that it has been automatically provided, I can edit, for example, the polling frequency. Let's uh, go for two seconds. I can also add HTTP headers, query parameters, of course, if needed. And if I'm going back to a terminal, as you can see, it has already, the polling frequency has already been updated without closing and reopening the stream. So that's pretty cool. So enough with this part. Let's see how it's going in the application. So um, first of all, to um, be able to start streaming session, obviously, I will need the JavaScript SDK we provided. And as we are going to deal with JSON patch, I need, I'll need a um, JSON patch library, of course, which I'm going to import there. OK, once it's done, so let's start with XC Knight, for example. First of all, obviously, I need to um, declare the ISD token, which has been given to me on the developer portal. Then, 
so I will need an XNI constant, which is just there. Let's remove this ugly HTTP call. Um, so then I'm going to create an event source object by uh, calling the create event source method on the stream that I object which with um, the API I want to stream and the SD token as parameters. Once this object is created, there is several callbacks uh, which are you can register to, but the two most important callbacks to register to are on data and on patch. So the on data um, callback will send us the first snapshot of data. So that's where I'm going to bind my quotes object to a snapshot. And then the on patch object will uh, send us um, patches. So the updates, basically the updates we have seen before. So that's where I'm going to apply, uh, use the JSON patch apply object to apply patches on the snapshot. And then to really start the streaming session, I'm just calling the open method on the event source object. And if I'm going back to my application, it should have thought stream. Yeah, it's now streaming data in real time from Xenite. Great. So now if you want to add another API, uh, let's say stock tweets, for example, we are just going to do the same and reusing our SD token. So my SD token has already been declared. I just need, I'm going to remove this. I just need to uh, create an event source object for stock tweets with the stock tweets API. Then create, um, calling the on data callback and uh, binding my scope tweets object to um, the stock tweets um, data snapshot. And then calling the on patch method to apply the diff. And I think I'm just missing this. Here. Oh. And then, obviously, still the same. I'm going to open the session on the event source object. Here it is. So obviously, it depends of um, on if we got uh, new uh, tweets um, from a stock tweets user in the three seconds. Um, so if there is stock tweets user in the room, you can just <laughs> tweet on Apple. <laughs> and uh, well, yeah, okay. So that's a life constraint. So I guess we receive patches, actually, if I put console.log, I think we can see um, patches from stock tweets. But if nothing happened, well, <laughs> I think there is no updates. Um, okay. No stock tweets either in the room? Sad. <laughs> okay, so that's it. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, so uh, ah, changed. Web yeah, Great. SS uh, did something. SS is here with Steve. Um, so for those who want a, a private coding session, uh, we have a booth. So you, we can talk about it or talk about uh, HTTP2 server sent event or anything you coders uh, like to talk about. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want any help uh, putting some uh, dynamic data into your apps to turn it into a real-time experience, we're here to help. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs>